everyone, and welcome back to Don 10. We've got Gecko versus Queen here, and we lost the die roll. We were forced to go first. We would have loved to go second in this match, but we did hit the Sindri on one. Being able to mill over five cards is pretty good. We got some hits there. He starts off on Deval, which is perfect for his deck. Queen is definitely scary in OPO6, I'm not going to lie. Queen is a force to be reckoned with with these new cards. Being able to play, stack your deck so that you can play Sanji into Yamato or Katakuri for free is just broken. Alright, so we're on 3 Don turn. We're going for a turn 1 Absalom play if I can make it happen. We could have went Perona here and took a card out of hand, but you don't really want to get cards out of Queen's hand, which is kind of where we're at here. Because Queen cares about being on a low low hand size plus a low uh, life size. So you don't really want to feed into that too much. Like, I probably could have this turn, but you definitely don't want to do it after this turn because you're just feeding their strategy. So he plays Delphi Blocker here, and then I'm a, I believe he just swings for six. And if I'm correct, we just take that one. Yeah. Still setting it up, making sure he wants it the way he wants it. <clears throat> the thing about Queen is you really need to think a lot about the way you're stacking your deck because you got to think. You're going to draw, you know, how many are you going to draw? What are you going to hit, hit into at what turn, etc., etc. Like, I can't wait to start playing Queen again. Uh, I did get permission from my buddy here that he would let me use Queen whenever I want to. So I'm going to give Perona a try after Gecko here. And then I'm going to probably play like a tournament or two with uh, Queen as long as Connor's there. Because, man, I loved that deck, and I was so stoked for OPO6, but I really wanted to play Gecko. So now we're on 5 Don turn. We're probably just going to swing 5, swing 6, and then play Borsalino. Hmm, it makes sense. chooses to use the event to get out of that attack and then we just play down Borsalino and pass it on over and now it's Queen's 6 Dawn turn so we know Katakuri or nothing crazy is coming out this turn it's probably just a bunch of blockers uh, I would assume another 6k swing plus an X Drake would be a good play yep <clears throat> makes sense being able to see two more cards down or one more card down, I think. And I gotta say, I love the sleeves he's got his, his deck. He's got his deck in. It's pretty cool. And he sends another six. Pretty sure we should counter out of this one. But we decided to take. That's interesting. It was a world we should have countered out of that one. I'm not, like, upset at it, but maybe we should have. Maybe we should have. <clears throat> all right, all right. So now we're on 7 Don turn, so we can't play Gecko yet. But we can play Suru into the Brook to get rid of the X Drake. Or we can just play the Brook out, get rid of the Dofi, and then swing. Well, that's not smart because then all we have is one 5k swing. So that's not great. Yeah, so we'll get rid of the X Drake. Being able to swing two fives into the four seems a lot better.
Yeah, that seems like a, a way, way better play. Good job, Michael. Good job. You did it. So we've done a really good job at pretty much controlling the board. And then he hits trigger, which is really nice for him. Boa is such a good, such a good addition to queen. Or it's like a, a good solid card for queen, not addition. Um, the good additions for queen was obviously the Sanji, the... Uh, the, the Deval from the starter deck was a huge addition. So he plays out another Dolphy blocker to set up some more. We were super happy to not see a Sanji off, like Sanji play this turn, or a Katakuri play, or Yamato play this turn. Super huge, because he could have popped the Absalom out of play. He could have popped... Well, he almost could have popped the Brook at this point, but he's one short. But playing the Katakuri, putting the Brook at bottom of my life would have been kind of huge too. <laughs> so he's got five left. Looks like he's playing out of... <clears throat> I'm sorry. He's got... Uh, five left, plays out of Sanji, and then passes and doesn't swing with the queen. Interesting. I would have at least swung the queen at the Absalom just to see what I would have done. That's an interesting play from, from Connor there. All right, so we're on our nine Don turn, and we're thinking about what we could be doing. And I'm like, well, I could play Gecko here, but it doesn't make sense. Because I don't really have much going on in my trash for it. So I really want to like start trashing stuff. So I just play out the Anupe, putting the Suru into trash, and then trashing two Luchis. So that I can pull off some crazy Luchi plays maybe next turn if I can find like a Great Eruption or um, an Ice Age. And this Perona isn't ever going to make my opponent discard or give a minus effect at this point. Like, none of the Peronas I draw will. So those are just solid bodies or 2Ks in hand, which is really good. I don't really have to think about the Perona plays. And I'm thinking to myself, I really want to play out the Borsalino and kind of blow up something, but I don't really have a way to. So I just go 5... Then we go five with lead. And I did this a little backwards here. I should have went five with the Sindri first before the Brook. But he makes... Oh, that's right. He made the Brook uh, not be able to attack with the Bej. Which was super gas. That was, that was a really good, really good life there. And then we go five into life. See what he wants to do. See if he wants to block or something. So that's all right. So he does take the block with one of the Dofies. And then we... Uh, Remove the Sindri out of play to play out the Borsalino to get a blocker down, which is super good. Just in case he does go, you know, 9-drop Sanji into something this turn before I play my Gecko, we at least have two bodies that can't be KO'd with, like, rejects or uh, Onami triggers or something, you know. So Because he did go Sanji into the Soge King, which is s super scary. Because now he's got two blockers, queen in play, bounces one of my Borsos, has um, draw two trash two effect to filter. Like, that was a really good solid turn. Like, it's not the best character to play off the Sanji there. I think the best character off of Sanji would have been Katakuri or Yamato. But it was still a super solid play. But our board's pretty much still intact, so I'm not entirely terrified here. Like, it was scary to see the Sanji, but we can follow it up with um, a Gecko play of our own. And I'm just, like, debating what's the best line we take. How are we going to attack once we start this? Like, where do I send this to Don that isn't needed for the Gecko? And it's like, could I, I could just do a bunch of fives and a six and then play the Gecko go from there there's like a world where i don't really need to blow up anything this turn and i can um just play out another borsalino off of it there's a few things we could do here 
I kind of like the idea of, yep, going five, five. So five with the Yanupe, five with the Absalom, five with Gecko, and then six with Brook, and then just play out the um, Gecko Moria. Sorry, brain fart. And either play the Siru and Luchi, or I can play out Borsellino plus Anupe. Either one's okay, but he finds another badge to shut to shut off the brook again, which is, it's just like meh. Feels bad, but it is what it is. It's not as bad as Ten Mom, I'll tell you. So then we play the Gecko, and we're gonna replace the Absalom and the Anupe with Luchi and Siru, giving the blocker minus two and blowing up the blocker. Don't hate this play. I don't hate this play. I think it's okay to put the Sindri, probably the Peronas at this point to the deck because they're not doing anything. So I, I actually, I don't even know why I thought about this. I should have just put the the Sindri and the two Peronas into the deck because it's three 2Ks. Because it's very unlikely that Perona's going to actually get any value out of making my opponent discard for the rest of this match. So like if we so wanted to. So I don't know why we even thought about that. The Perona should have just went to the bottom. And then we do decide to send the blocker. Getting ballsy here. Because he was at one life and no card in hand. No cards in hand. So I, I thought if I swing the Borsalino, he has to take it. And then even if he gets Yamato plus heal here, we can still go for game next turn. Because it, he won't blow anything in, except for Siru up. And then I think this was a misplay on his part. He swings into the Siru here for six and i was like whoa hold on you should have swung it. like in my brain i'm like you swing at the borsalino make me use the counter right siru can't do anything she's not attacking i can guarantee you that she's not gonna attack and then he plays out a sanji he's got six uh five don left so we go, uh, he, I think he swings into the Barcelino here, which would make sense. And I believe we just let this go, yeah. That makes sense from our part. And then he goes a big 12 in the life, and I, I'm just, oh, we're taking that. We're not even gonna, we're not even gonna act like we got it. We're just gonna take it, and then he's at one blocker, one card in hand, one life. It's very easy to go for game here. Now, Future reference, swing the gecko first. They either take the life or block, right? Don't swing the big thing first. The, the queen doesn't play Thunderbolt and stuff like that. They, they might play Onami, but that is what it is, right? <laughs> so this line was okay to take because it won us the game, but thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Smash that join button. Smash that sub button. Catch you later.